Mark chapter 12 and in verse 29 and 30. And Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is here, O Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than this. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. Speaking on the subject, evidence or proofs of love for God. Evidence or proofs of love, that is evidence in bracket, proofs of love for God. Our objective is to understand what love for God is all about. By midweek service on Wednesday, we looked at what it means to be dedicated. What it means to be dedicated to God. Because many do not understand dedication. Some think that it is mere religious activity that is dedication. Others think that it is a look of piety or piousness that is dedication to God. But we look at eight things, eight phrases that describe dedication at the midweek service. If you are not there, I'd like you to pick the message. The first phrase was love for God. That dedicated people, they love God, that is affection. And then sold out to God, that is donation. Love for God, affection. Sold out to God, donation. And then yielded to God, that is submission. That people are who are dedicated to God, they love God, they are sold out to God, they are yielded to God. And then number four, we saw hooked on God. The way people get hooked on cocaine, hooked on God, that is addiction. That dedicated people are hooked on God. And then five, stand by God. That is the man who is dedicated has a stand, he stands by God. Is, is there to defend the interest of God. Is there to protect the inter- interest of God. That's protection. And then stand before God in supplication and prayer. Dedicated people stand before God. They stand before God. And then we saw also stand for God. Stand by God. Different from stand before God, then different from stand for God. That is representation. I represent God to my generation. That is dedication. I represent God. And then number seven is living for God. Consecration. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Living for God. You are not in that service. It's important to pick up the message and I believe it will do something for you. Now, the first of those definitions of dedication was love for God. It's love for God. Which is affection. The question is, what is the evidence of a person's love for God? Dedication to God means I love God. Now, if I love God, what is or what what is the what are the proofs? Many people think that love is an emotion, that love is just an emotion. No. Love is an emotion that has both motion and action. That is, love is not just what you feel. Love is what you will and what you do. In loving, you will it. You don't just feel for your wife. You, 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 you will and you do some things. That is how it is. 
We don't just feel things for God. We don't just feel for God. We have emotion that is backed up with motion and action. So what are the actions? All the doings of lovers of God. If I love God, what will I do? What are the characteristics of a man who loves God? Number one is love for his presence. When you love God, you love his presence. You love his presence. You love his company. You love to hang around him. As it is in the physical, so it is in the spiritual. When you love a person, you love their presence. You love to hang around them. The psalmist said in Psalm 42 verse 1 to 2. As the heart pants after the water brooks, so panted my soul after the O God. My soul thirsted for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? You want to spend time with them. Psalm 63 verse 1 to 2. The Bible said, Oh God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsted for thee. My flesh longed for thee. In a dry and thirsty land, where no water is. To see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. God, you want to spend time with God. You want to dwell in his presence, in communion. You want to dwell in his presence at the place of prayer. And like I said, one thing about lovers is that they want to hang around each other's presence. So, if you don't love the presence of God, you don't love the company of God. Something is wrong with your dedication. Number one is love for his presence. Number two is love for his voice. Or his word. You love his voice. You love his word. Love for his voice in bracket word. What is the meaning of that? Everybody knows. If you have ever loved anybody. Something about it is that you want to hear their voice. There is something about their voice that does something to you. There is something about their word that does something to you. In Songs of Solomon chapter 2 and in verse 8, Songs of Solomon chapter 2 and in verse 8, the Bible said, The voice of my beloved, behold, he cometh, leaping upon the mountains, skipping upon the hills. The voice of my beloved, the voice of the beloved. There is something about the voice of the one you love. You want to hear that voice. Have you seen young men who want to get married to a young lady? They carry the phone. Hello? How are you? Fine. Are you okay? Where are you now? What are you doing? Have you eaten today? (laughs) In fact, at times they can even pause on the phone. And the phone is still on. Okay, what are you doing now? I'm just trying to clear the room. Okay, I'm still waiting on the phone. Hallelujah. That is what it means. It is not possible for you to love God and not love his voice. Exodus chapter 20 and in verse 6. Exodus chapter 20 and in verse 6. He said, God is showing mercy unto thousands of them that love him and keep his commandments. Or are interested in his sayings. Every distance from the word... Is showing a bankruptcy of love for God. Every time you are ready to go days at a time. Without hearing from God. Without hearing from his word. Without hearing his voice. Something is wrong in your relationship with God. Days are passing. The other day I saw my wife reading. 
and thudding very, very aggressively. I said, what's happening? He said, oh, I have to catch up on my Bible reading schedule. I have to catch up on my study schedule, my Bible reading schedule. I think that's two or three days ago. And just reading voluminously. You want to hear his voice. You want to hear his voice. Love for his voice. Love. Now, for me, it is almost abominable for food to cross this mouth. If word has not entered the ear every day. Job said I have esteemed the words of, of, of his mouth more than my necessary food. Was that Job chapter 23 and in verse 12? I have esteemed, neither have I gone back on his commandments. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. I am more eager to hear him than to eat food. Love for his presence. Number two, you know a dedicated person by love for his voice or his word. Is God speaking to somebody here? Say loud, amen. Number three is love for his house. Love for his house. Love for God culminates in love for his house. The house of your lover is never too dirty for you. And the house of your lover is never too distant for you. If the one you love lives in a lungu, you will visit that lungu. Ay, 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 ay. All our mothers and parents, most of us, our parents are in the village. The village is not too villages for you to travel. It's not too villagious. The road may be unpassable, may be bumpy, pothole. By the time you have passed through some village roads, it's like you had a bath with sand. But you are going there because your lover is there. Church is too far, it's because you don't really love him. Traffic is too much. It's because love is not really there. I am unable to go because of fuel scarcity. We are trusting the Lord for that scarcity to be arrested. But there are things we can do even if we need to trek to do it, do them if we are really truly committed. Am I communicating? Psalm 122 verse 2, verse 1. I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. I was glad. We have a generation of people today who have no love for the house of the Lord. No love for the house of the Lord. No love for the house of the Lord. It's a challenge today with the demonic COVID that came at a point. Psalm 27 and in verse 4. He said, one thing have I desired of the Lord. And that will I seek after. That I may dwell. Not just visit the house. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord. All the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord. And to inquire in his temple. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord. Say, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tabernacles of robbery, of bribery. Dwell. Love for his house. Psalm 84 verse 7. The Bible said they go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeared before God. We appear before God in Zion, not before Zoom. Not before television set. Not before phone. There may be times when there is a need to watch on phone because you are not in the physical vicinity. There may be a time where there may be the need to watch on television or the computer because you are not physically where the brethren are. But where it is possible to be physically there and you are not there, 
He said how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25. He said, and you are come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God. Hebrews chapter 12, I think from verse 22, 23, 24. But you are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. And to the blood of the sprinkling that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. People, don't let anything keep you out of church. Don't let anything keep you out of his house. Love for his house. When I was in the university in those days, I had so much depth of God's word. So loaded with word. When I opened the scripture, I saw so much out of scripture. When I went to the service, at a particular church I was going at that time, the person that was the pastor, for one reason or the other, didn't seem to see so much out of the word. Get a verse and just play around it and go. Just do other things. That was almost going to tempt me. To say, I'm seeing so much depth out of this word. There could be more that can come out of word. But I, I, I didn't bow for that temptation. You know what I will do? I will go to the church because I must be in service. And I will sit down there, enjoy the worship, enjoy everything. And the man, out of the same passage that he is preaching from, I will start receiving light from that same passage inside the church. And be writing notes. You may think that uh, maybe what he was saying was what I was writing. I'll write some things he was saying. But out of that same, because he is not the owner of that passage. And if God led him to, to, to open that passage for that day, then there is a message from that passage. So I will trust God and receive it in the church. And then receive a lot of light. By the time service is over, I am going home fully loaded. Not empty, not bankrupt. That's the challenge of young men today. So I can't go to church. I'm, I'm, we are the generation that are the remnant people. We have been called out of church. We, we have so much revelation that people of this generation don't have. People of older generation. And they just mess up their lives. It doesn't matter how deep you are. It doesn't matter how fireful you are. It doesn't matter how anointed you are. There is a place for you in the church and God can minister to you in the same church where you thought you can get nothing. Somebody say a loud amen. amen. Somebody say a loud amen. amen. One of the things that you will... Sh- that you will you know, before I, when I rededicated my life to Christ, I went to the fellowship on campus before the others came. I stood at the front of the door, welcoming people. Something about church excites you. Something about God excites you. Something about his house excites you. If you are a lover of God. When I get to a church that does not have a window or a door or a lover, the first thing I will do is to make a pledge. I've been invited as guest minister to uncompleted churches many many times first thing I will do is you know what why is this church not completed yet why is it not finished alright I am taking the lead I am going to do this and do that by the message of God not one not two not three there are churches who have roofed the whole church I was there only as a guest minister and I saw it without roof the house of my father cannot be like this are you hearing what I am saying here today This is very important. I am saying this because the situation of the earth today, theories online and all manner of things is anti-God and anti-church, anti-local assembly. But we don't have any revelation that is higher than the revelation of the world. We have come to Mount Zion. I was glad when they said, let us go 
into the house of the Lord. Even as deep as the apostles were, they met daily in the temple and from house to house. They met daily in the temple. Nobody could have been deeper than Paul the apostle or deeper than Peter the apostle. But they met daily in the temple. We are not even meeting daily yet. We have not beat their record at all. We have not matched it. But they came to church every day and from house to house. Beloved, if you are sitting here or you are hearing me anywhere you are, you don't have no reason to be away from the physical church because lovers of God love his house. That is love for his house. Number four is love for souls. When you love God, you love his presence, you love his voice or his word, you love his house, then you will love souls. Our love for God will culminate in love for the souls of men. It will culminate in the salvation of the lost. We love him so much, it will provoke our love for his concern. When you love a person, anything that bothers them bother you. And we know that souls bother God. In Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9. said, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness. But God is long suffering to us word. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So he is concerned with the death of the wicked. No wonder he told Simon Peter in John chapter 21, verse 15 to verse 17. Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than this? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said, Feed my lambs. Feed my lambs. Again he repeated, Feed my lamb. Feed my sheep. Again he repeated, Feed my sheep. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 36, all the way to verse 38, when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion. On them because they fainted and we are scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then said it unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest feet. This is the concern of God. If you love God, you will do something about soul winning. Either you win souls directly, you invite them to church to get saved, you give towards the winning of souls, you intercede towards the winning of souls, you do all of the above. There is no genuine lover of God who is not interested in the salvation of the lost. Everywhere we go, souls come around us. Pray for me, pray for me. And... Hardly will we miss the opportunity of leading them to Christ. Passion for souls. I told Abdullah, I said, in this season, only the politicians have the fields and the, the stadiums and all. And gospel seem to be quiet. Why? Why should God not be on the field raking souls into his kingdom? So we are out there as well. We're in Portacot, you saw the clips just now. We'll be in Makodi this week. One in the south, one in the north. Before the general elections. Am I communicating? He said, I must do the will of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can do it. Paul the apostle said, necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. When you love God. You will love souls. Beloved brothers and sisters, let us prove our commitment to God in talking to our friends, colleagues in the office, talking to our brothers and sisters, our families, family members and friends. The way I think is, if I love God and I love people, I cannot tell them everything. You are discussing with someone about everything else except the matter of his eternity. Why? You are talking uh, cloth, you are talking dress, you are talking house, you are talking uh, hairstyle, you are talking everything. Apart from the most important thing 
of that person's life, which is where will you spend eternity when you breathe your last? And everybody you see will go one day. Love for souls is number four. Number five is love for God's children. When you love God, <laughs> you will love his, God's children. One woman insulted me one day when I was a baby. My mother almost tore her to pieces. Say, look at you. Is it my son you are talking to like that? The, the kind of words that mama rained on that woman. What they call in our place, body, body insult. Just rain her down. Dried her up. My, my, my mother was like a mother hen. And all, most mothers are like that. If you look for my trouble, I may leave you alone. But look for the trouble of the baby I was pregnant for for nine months. I deal the hell out of your life. If human beings are like that, how much more almighty God. If you want to see the anger of mother hen, touch the hen. Many people have incurred the anger of God by touching God's children. You say, but I'm a child of God too. You say, yes. And I haven't given you the license to touch another child. Am I communicating? It is not possible for anybody to claim to love God and you don't love the children that God whom you love has. It's not possible. It's not possible to claim to be a Christian and you don't love Christians. It's not possible. First John chapter 3 verse 14 to verse 17. First John chapter 3 verse 14 to verse 17. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso has this world's good and seeth his brother have need and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him. How dwelleth the love of God in that person? Somebody say amen. John chapter 13 verse 34 to 35. John 13 34 to 35. He said a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one to another. Romans chapter 12 and in verse 10 is talking about love one to another. He said, be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring one another. You are a prayer warrior. Evangelism team member. And you do all the long fasting. But you can't greet brethren. You are so holy. So dedicated. So committed. That interacting with people is a sin. Where are you going? Who are you deceiving? It's plus one minus one. Your lovelessness neutralizes the impact of your fasting. Your lovelessness neutralizes the impact of your fast. It neutralizes the impact of your prayer. It neutralizes it. Did you read before Isaiah chapter 58 verse 6? It said, this is the kind of fasting I have chosen. If you are fasting, include this. Lose the bands of wickedness. Undo heavy bodies. Let the oppressed go free. Break yokes. Somebody say a loud amen. If you are dedicated to God, you will be the most lovely personality anybody can hang around. If you genuinely love God, you will be a lovely person. Lovely, lovable. Lovely, lovable. Loving. 
Do you know what I mean? You are lovely and easily lovable and highly loving. But when your presence is very toxic, the atmosphere around you is very toxic. Nobody wants to hang around. Nobody is interested in interacting because you are very cantankerous, quarrel, looking for where to happen. Then what kind of church is that? What kind of Christianity is that? Permanently under pressure, under tension. Can't laugh for nobody, can't smile, nothing. Something is wrong. You cannot walk with love, for God is love. And not catch love. Did you hear what I said? You cannot walk with love. And not catch love. I make no boost. But my wife, my children. They are permanent recipients. Of love overflow. Permanent recipient. Of love overflow. At times I come out of the closet, hugging everybody, patting everybody on the back, smiling for, and my wife say, just go back there. Go back and remain there so you can come out again like this. If it is the presence of God you are coming from, you can't be coming with bitterness. For God is love. Am I communicating? So your dedication to God, your dedication to God should be, should trans, should translate into practical love for the brethren. Love for the brethren, for the people of your life, for wife, for children, for those around you. It should translate practically. And I can tell you, if we can love and love like God does, in a short while, there will be a revolution in our generation. Can I go? I, I am about halfway, but I can be faster. Love for God's children. Number six. And like I said, if you want to see the red eye of a woman, look for the children's trouble. Insult them. Undermine them. If you want to look for God's trouble, undermine his children. Eh? God was the God of both Miriam and Aaron uh, and Moses. But as Miriam spoke against Moses, God smote Miriam with leprosy. God didn't say, both of you belong to me. He said, you belong to me, but you are, you are, you are insulting your brother and he is my son. I will deal with you as if I don't know you. You know what Moses said? Moses said, sir, please pardon her. You know what God said? God said, if her father spit in her eyes, will she not be ashamed of herself for seven days? Banish her out of the camp. I am not denying that I am her father. I am her father, but he insulted another of my son. She has injured one of my children. And even if he will not fight for himself, I will fight for him. Look at your neighbor. Say, be careful how you handle me. My father may answer. Somebody say amen. So it's not only unbelievers, that, it's not only unbelievers that God will deal with because they dealt with his children. He will deal with fellow of his children who deal with other of his children mercilessly. He will deal with them as well. Somebody say loud amen. amen. Love for God's children. Number six is love for people. Now, we mentioned love for souls. We mentioned love for God's children. And now, it is going beyond just God's children to the people of the earth. Love for people. Mark chapter 12, verse 29 to 31, where we read, that if I love the Lord God, verse 30, if I love the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength, 
it will translate into my love for my neighbor as myself. Verse 31. Then you shall love your neighbor as yourself. In 1 John chapter 4 verse 20 to 21. 1 John chapter 4 verse 20 to 21. If a man say I love God and he hated his brother, he hated his cousin, even if he's an unbeliever, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love the God he has not seen? If you can't love a man that you see, how can you love the God you have not seen? God loves people so much, he made man in his image. Genesis 1, 26 to 28. God loves people so much, he sent his only begotten son. John chapter 3, verse 16. So he expects us to love human beings, to love people. To love people. People around your life, people in your world, should feel the love of God out of you. When people encounter you, let them encounter love. There are some Christians that are the reason why some unbelievers won't go to church. Am I communicating? They say, if this is how to be a Christian, I don't want to go to church. Why? Because of the kind of life, the kind of, 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 of wickedness the so-called Christian has perpetrated towards the unbeliever. Love for people. Number, number seven, if you love God, you love to give. Love to give. For God so loved the world, he gave. John chapter 3, verse 16. Lovers are givers. It is possible to give without loving. But it is never possible to love without giving. The Bible says charity is kind, love is kind, is generous. 1 Corinthians 13 and in verse 4. Love is generous. Is There is generosity in love. That is why when the man says, I love my wife, and he has the means, and he doesn't give anything to the wife, that love is questionable. Solomon loved the Lord, and he gave. First Kings chapter 3, verse 3a. He loved the Lord. First Kings 3, 3a. And then in verse 4. And Solomon loved the Lord, and the king went to Gibeon, that was a great high place, and a thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon that altar. Love gives. Love gives. Lovers are givers. When a person claims to love and giving is not a part of that love, something is wrong with that love. That was number seven. Love gives. Evidence of God's love is love, love for giving. Maybe we'll put it like that. Love for his children, love for people, love for giving to him and his cause. Numbers 8 is love for praise and worship. When you love God, you like to express your, your love to him, express your value. That is done at the place of praise and worship. Everybody who loves expresses value. In the physical, Mama, I want to let you know that I appreciate all your input in my life. Daddy, I want to let you know that I am happy that God brought me out into this world through you. I'm grateful. Thank you for all that you have done for me. Wife, honey, I want to appreciate your place in my life. And I thank God that he brought you into my life. And so on and so forth. We express value. We give appreciation to people we love. To communicate our love to them. That is what we do in praise and in worship. It is not possible to claim to love God and you don't love worship. It's not possible to claim to love God and you don't love praise. David was a man after God's heart. First Samuel 13, 14. He was a man after God's heart. First Samuel 13, 14. Acts 13, 22. 
He was the man after God's heart. And because he was the man after God's heart, he moved in love. He flowed in love. He flowed in praise and in worship. Psalm 63 and in verse 8, he said, my heart, my, my soul followed hard after you. I love you with all my heart. And the outcome of that was that he was a sweet psalmist of Israel. Somebody say loud amen. If you love the Lord, say amen. That amen can be better. If you love the Lord, say amen. If you love the Lord, shout the loud and say amen. Lift your right and say, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Loudest, I love you, Lord. You will love to praise him. If if you love the Lord, murmuring will not be part of your vocabulary. Complaining and grumbling. You love to praise him. You love to give thanks. You love to appreciate. Number nine is love for service. When you love God, you love to serve him. You love to do something. You know, Service is one of the love languages. I'm sure some of you have come across the love languages. Highly popularized in our place here by Dr. And Mrs. Becky Enenche. Love languages. When she was teaching the women. Quality time. Acts of service. And so on and so forth. When I was, when my children were much younger, every time I came home, they would all rush at me. One would take hold of my shoe. He's pulling it. I'm pulling this, the socks. Another one took hold of the tie. He's pulling it. Another one is taking. They are just. They just want to do something. And all of them, they are doing different things. That is, it is another way to say, Daddy, I love you. Daddy, I appreciate you. Daddy, is there anything more I can do? Am I communicating? Service is a demonstration of love. When you love somebody, you want to run errands. You want to say, is there anything I can do? Is there any difference I can make? You want to run errands. How is it that we are claiming that we love God and we are not, we are not, we are not interested in doing anything? How can somebody sit in church for 20 years? He has not been involved in one activity of service for any reason. Why? In Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 12, Deuteronomy chapter 10 and in verse 12 He said and now Israel What does the Lord God require of you But to fear the Lord your God To walk in all his ways To love him and to serve the Lord Thy God With all thy heart and with all thy soul When you when you love the Lord You want to serve him with your might Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 13 and it shall come to pass, if you shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. One woman called us from the, I think from Europe, and she says she wants to appreciate God for myself and family because that we kept them going during the lockdown. Many people said such. From America, from all around the world. And we appreciate our media people as well. Because they did the setup. You know? At that time, when churches closed down, all manner of things. And then those who were doing online services. Some will come with t-shirts and sleeveless and sit on, cross their chairs with legs because they are talking from home. You know what we will do? I will come like I'm coming for service. Suit, tie. Pray and prepare fast. Every day was a different message for almost a year over a year. Intense, deep message. Stand in front of the microphone. No audience in the, in, 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 in the place. Wife and children. I'm preaching as if I was preaching to a glory dome filled audience. And God saw it. Sweating, cleaning sweat. Why? Because for me, Paul the 
apostle said to live is Christ. I mean, we don't have a spare life. You can have spare tire, but you don't have spare life. The day that has passed, has passed forever. It will never reverse. Am I communicating at all? Whatsoever your hand fight to do, do it with all that you have got. Back from crusade yesterday, in church preaching today, schedule continues tomorrow. By weekend we are in Berry State for crusade, return back the following week, elections, and then next week, I believe it is about on crusade, and then the next week, I believe it's a Kragana crusade, and then the next week, I believe it's been a Republic crusade. We are on our feet and there are people who are more tired than us. Somebody say amen. amen. Lift your right and say, I am going to serve the Lord. One day, I preached, I finished night vigil here. And then by that morning, I was in the south, south part of the country. Preaching in a stadium. That is from vigil straight to another program. All night here. Our music director said, he turned on the television and he said, who is there preaching? All of, all of us left vigil this morning and he's preaching somewhere. I'm not tired again. I'm not tired again. He said, I want to send you a message to let you know, sir, I am available. Anything you want me to do, I'm doing. If I am not the one preaching that preached last night and I am still resting on the bed and you who preach, you are preaching somewhere else this morning. I am not tired. I'm no longer tired. I prophesy upon someone here. Energy for service. Enthusiasm for service. Enthusiasm for kingdom service. is released upon you now. In the name of Jesus. Lift your right and say, Father, I receive the grace to serve you with all my heart. And with all my strength, I receive that grace. Now, shout the loudest amen. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Love to praise him. Love for service. And finally, love to please him. When you love God, when you love anybody, you don't want to offend them. You don't want to disappoint them. You don't want to irritate them. You love to obey them. When you love God, you will love to obey Him. You will love, you will love righteousness. You will love to keep His commandments. John chapter 14 and in verse 15. He said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. John, first John chapter four, verse three. He said, and then, was that first John chapter four, right? Revelation four, eleven. He said, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are. And we're created. You know that SU song? FCS song, Knife song? Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. For thou hast created all. Thou art worthy. Worthy, O oh Lord. For thou art all things. One more time. Thou art worthy. Thou Thou art worthy, O oh. worthy, O oh Lord. For thou hast grieved. Can 
Can we stand up as we sing it? All things are. Thou art one. Thou, thou art one. Be your Lord. What be your Lord? For thou hast cleaned all things. There is none holy as thy Lord. There is no And he said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. When God looks at you, what will he conclude? Question to ask is, is my life giving God pleasure or my life is giving him pain? Because it's not neutral. There is something God is feeling when he sees you. In the world of Noah, I say, he repented me that I made man. I'm sorry for creating man. I regret. Can you imagine Jehovah regretting? Question I'll ask myself is, is God regretting over my life? Does he regret creating me? Or he is happy he made me? He told Satan, look at my servant Job. Is God bragging over me for the devil? Or the devil is bragging to God that God could not have me. It's a question to ask. The way I dress, is God pleased? Is he proud of it? The kind of businesses I do, how I make money, is God happy with it? Or is pained? Mercy. Is he pained with my interactions? 
The way I talk about people to others. These are questions to ask. But one thing I want. Is when I see him that day. He will say well done. Thou good and faithful servant. And like Catherine Kuhlman said. I will tell him Lord. I may not have done everything perfectly. But I want to let you know. I tried my best. I tried my best. To do everything possible. Like we have always said. Even if you are not yet perfect. Be brutally sincere with God. Lord this is who I am. And this is the help I need. And I don't want to offend you deliberately. I can't. Hallelujah. How do I know that I love God? Please place it on the screen. I want us to read it all out. So you confirm to yourself that you understand. How do I know that I love God? Number one. Love for his presence. Number two. Love for his voice or word. Number three. Love for his house. Number three, four. Love for souls. Number five. Love for God's children, for his children. Number six, love for people. Number seven, love for giving to him and his cause. Number eight, love for praise and worship. Number nine, love for service. And number ten, love to please him. Lift up your two hands now and begin to speak to God. Begin to speak to him. Begin to appreciate him. Appreciate his word. Appreciate his word. Appreciate his word. I appreciate his word to you today. I appreciate his word to you today. I appreciate his word to you today. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you. Adonai, thank you. Elion, thank you for your word. Thank you. Blessed be your name. Honor to your name. Lift your voice and speak to him. In the name of Jesus. Romans chapter 5 verse 4 and verse 5. Romans 5 and patience, experience and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed. Because the love of God is shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. Father, saturate my heart today with a fresh dimension of your love. Saturate my heart today. Help me to love you afresh. To love you like never before. Place your hand on your chest and pray after me and say, Father, saturate my heart today with love like never before. Help me to love you like never before. Fill my heart. Saturate my heart with your love. Oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray. Let's <laughs> go. 